Mark III version of BMW's 1 Series gets a new platform, a new drive layout and a cutting edge range of engines. It's sleeker, lighter, safer, more practical and more efficient than before. And the company reckons it's still the most rewarding steer in the compact premium hatch sector. Big claims for an important car. The switch from rear-driven to a front-driven powertrain might be the headline story here, but there's plenty else that's new with the engineering of this third-generation 1 Series design. The Bavarian maker's aim was to repackage this model to a more conventional formula, but deliver that in a very BMW kind of way. And that's essentially how this car has turned out. On the move, you get a grippy, confident sense of purpose that rivals can't quite match with precise, accurate steering and an agile willingness to change direction. All of it aided by near-perfect weight distribution, a clever new ARB traction control system that more precisely meters out torque, and a new FAAR chassis that saves around 25 kilos of weight. The ride is somewhat firm, but BMW fans won't mind that, particularly as there's now the option of adaptive suspension on top spec models. Engine wise, there's the usual lineup of units that BMW uses with its compact front driven hatches, which means 1.5 litre three cylinder petrol and diesel units for the derivatives at the foot of the range, the 140 horsepower 118i model we're trying here, and the alternative 116 horsepower 116d black pump fueled variant. Both can be had with optional seven speed dual clutch auto transmission on request, and even the 118i is decently efficient. In this manual form, managing a WLTP combined cycle reading of up to 45.6 mpg and an NEDC rated CO2 return of up to 122 grams per kilometre. Further up the lineup lie three 2 litre models, the popular 150 horsepower 118D diesel, which can be had in manual or 8 speed auto forms, and the two top variants, the 190 horsepower 120D diesel and the M135i petrol hot hatch, both of which are only offered with X drive, all wheel drive, and the 8 speed auto. We always wondered what kind of 1 Series BMW stylists would have come up with if they hadn't been constrained by the need to package around rear-driven mechanicals. In this Mark III model, we have our answer. A hatch that offers a similar roadway footprint to its F20 predecessor. It's a mere 5mm shorter, but one delivered to an otherwise very different dimensional formula. Much like its direct segment rivals, it's around 4.3 metres long, about 1.4 metres tall and around 1.7 metres wide. But that makes this car's proportions quite different to those of that previous model. This F40 series design sitting 34 millimetres wider and 13 millimetres higher than the old car. There's plenty else that's different here too. The profile perspective revealing a more wedge shaped silhouette and a pronounced shark style nose. The front is also very different from anything BMW has previously served up in one of its compact models. That's partly because of the adoption of this larger grille, which expands the usual pair of kidney-shaped intakes and joins them in the middle. Up front, you're served up a premium slice of cabin architecture borrowed from the current G20 3 Series model, which means it's very nice indeed. Soft touch surfaces and the solid feel of all the fixtures and fittings is matched on plusher models by things like contrast stitching and these intricate extended lighting door panel strips. There's plenty of luxury segment technology too, particularly if you pay more for the live cockpit professional package we have here, which matches a 10.25 inch virtual instrument binnacle screen with a classy centre dash iDrive monitor of the same size. There's some clever stuff incorporated into this extra cost setup, including what BMW calls an intelligent personal assistant, which is there to answer questions you can voice to the car as you drive it. Even the lesser Live Cockpit Plus media package gives you quite a lot, including Apple CarPlay, smartphone mirroring, though you only get that for a year before you have to pay for it. Many of the various connected drive Digital services are also life limited before becoming chargeable. Finding the ideal driving position is easy. The redesigned seats are very comfortable and there's plenty of interior storage space. Time to take a seat in the back. 
Changes certainly needed to be made here. The old Mark II F20 generation model offered rear folk just 690 millimetres of legroom, which, to give you some perspective, is about what you get from a typical Super Mini in the class below. In this F40 series car, that figure has increased by 33 millimetres. Essentially, there's about 10 millimetres more room than you get in a comparable Mercedes A class. And it feels like more because the car's hit point has been raised and the seat backs are scalloped to make more room for your knees. Let's take a look out back. And once the hatch rises, you're provided with a very reasonable 380 litres of cargo capacity. Need more room? Well, if you've paid extra for the through loading option that gives you this versatile 40-20-40 rear seat back split, you'll be able to push long items like skis through between a couple of rear seated folk. Push forward the rear bench and 1,200 litres of space can be freed up. We can't help feeling a little disappointed that this Mark III 1 series has abandoned its unique rear-driven selling point. But at the same time, we can't help being impressed by the way that the Munich makers managed to retain so much of this car's eager, dynamic character, despite the fundamental engineering changes visited upon it. This model will still beat most of its rivals for driver appeal, just not by such a significant margin as before. In summary, Der Eisner has become a whole lot more competitive in this guise. About to choose a Mercedes A-Class, an Audi A3, or even a plusher VW Golf? Well, you really ought to try one of these too. You might be surprised at just how much you like it.